I'm Becky Fast, and I'm the Executive Director of the Kansas Chapter of the National Association of Social Workers. I'm here in Topeka in front of the Visitor Center, which is the gateway to the Kansas State Capitol. This beautiful, iconic landmark here in Kansas was built over a 37-year time period and the Capitol was then officially dedicated in 1903. It is through these doors where social workers like yourself would enter to meet with their legislators, testify in a bill, and advocate for our clients, our communities, and our profession here in Kansas. Hello, Bojo Manogishko Kwe Nadaja Nukas. My name is Carol Kadu Blackwood. I'm an enrolled member of the Kikawa Tribe in Kansas, and I'm a licensed social worker. And I stand here proudly in front of the Kansas Capitol on the ancestral territory of the Kansas Tribe. And it's so important now more than ever for us as social workers to come together and advocate for the clients that we proudly serve. It's important to remove barriers for those that we serve and build bridges so that everyone can cross. Here we are in this beautiful Senate chamber where 40 senators deliberate to vote on a bill. So Kansas has 40 Senate seats across the district. Each of you have a senator that represents 60,000 people. In this body, we have 11 Democrats and 29 Republicans. So you may think, well, how does a bill get to the Senate floor? Well, a bill begins when a group of committed, passionate, thoughtful people like yourself meet with one of these senators, and they work and they advocate with the senator to introduce that bill. So where are bills introduced? Well, there are committees. Each of these senators serve on a committee. The key committee for social workers is the Public Health and Welfare Committee. That is where bills come forward on mental health, social services, Medicaid, and these are the key bills that often impact us, our clients, and the communities we live in. For example, two years ago, Kansas Chapter championed licensure reciprocity. This would allow seamless licensure across state lines. And we worked with a senator who introduced the bill into committee. Then, it wasn't done there, because then we had to advocate. Social workers across the state advocated that that bill should have a hearing. We met with the chair of the committee, the vice chair, and they determined that there should be a hearing. There should be public input. So after that hearing, social workers, social work organizations came and testified on the bill. So you think, oh great, we're done there. No. Nope. After that, then the senators meet and they amend and they mark up. And we proposed an amendment that our licensure to get our clinical specialist license would be similar to other states because ours was much different than other states, which would help more mobility across the state lines. And they added that amendment and voted it out favorable. We were so excited to get our bill out of committee because the reality is most bills never get out of committee. Most bills never have a hearing. So after that, the bill got out of committee, they reported it favorably, and then it goes over to the House side to the Health and Human Services Committee, and it starts all over. And so after both chambers vote on it, then it goes to the governor to vote on, and the governor signs it into law. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. We are in the House Chambers at the Topeka Capitol in Topeka, Kansas. And I am honored and humbled to stand here today and proudly uh, talk to you about the, the process of how a bill becomes a law. And I was privileged and honored to be a part of successfully pushing two, pieces, two out of four pieces of legislation into law for Native Americans. In 2018, our group lobbied successfully for the passage of House Bill 2498, or the Native American Regalia Bill. And that bill prohibits government institutions from prohibiting Native Americans from wearing their cultural regalia to function, formal functions, such as graduation ceremonies. And in, 29, in, February, in 2019, our group lobbied for the passage of Indigenous Peoples Day. That bill would have observed Columbus Day as Indigenous Peoples Day here in the state of Kansas. 
And regrettably, that bill died in the committee. It never made it to the, the House floor. And last year, our group was able to lobby successfully for the passage of House Bill 2443. And that, would, that bill provides resident tuition rates for certain need for the four tribes of Kansas, the four federally recognized tribes of Kansas. The Kickapoo Tribe in Kansas, the Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation in Kansas, Iowa Tribe, and the Sac and Fox. And that bill will guarantee in-state tuition rates for any of those four, four tribes, say if they live in California or Florida, they can come to Kansas to any public in university and they are guaranteed in-state tuition rates. But I stand here before you today to um, ask for your help. We, we lobbied for the House Bill 2646, which would have required the Attorney General to coordinate training for law enforcement agencies on missing and murdered Indigenous people, peoples. That bill, regrettably, it, it passed in the House Committee and the Senate Committee, but because of COVID, it didn't, it didn't pass. It died right there in the Senate Committee. But back to the House Bill 2443, that passed as Senate Bill 66 in a COVID package. So for a bill to be signed into law, the governor must sign that bill. This is the last stop on the road to becoming law. After our bill passed the House and the Senate, and it had to go to both chambers, then it came to the governor for signing. And Governor Kelly signed the bill into law and now Kansas social workers have licensure reciprocity due to all of us standing up and being a voice for change.